Have you ever been told you have a degenerative disc and feel like you needed to wrap your spine in bubble wrap in fear of it crumbling beneath you? Well, you're not alone. Getting that diagnosis can sound like a one-way ticket to a lifetime of pain, but there is much more to the story than what you see on x-rays. So join me as we unravel the mysteries of degenerative disc disease, putting these findings into context and revealing what it truly means for your back health. Hey everybody, welcome back for another episode of Physio Show. The intervertebral disc is composed of two primary parts, a tough outer fibrous layer and a more gel-like inner substance. The disc plays a crucial role as a shock absorber, reducing impact across the spine, increasing the spine's flexibility and contributing to the stability under load, such as when carrying weight. Evidence shows that as we age, we are more likely to have signs of degenerative disc disease. This has long been associated with low back pain due to a reduction of the gel-like substance within the disc, leading to a more compact and stiffer spine, which may bring about other issues such as arthritis and sciatica due to spinal nerve compression. But contrary to what most of us have heard, not everyone with signs of degenerative disc disease experiences pain. If that were the case, virtually anybody over the age of 30 would be complaining of pain because they are more likely to have signs of degenerative discs than not. And if you're over the age of 50, look out because you have over an 88% likelihood of having a degenerative disc. Based on those statistics, it's reasonable to argue that having signs of disc degeneration is normal and just a thing that happens as we get older. It is also common for those without any signs of spinal degeneration to experience low back pain in their lifetime. Imaging studies have found that 85 to 95% of those with chronic low back pain had no identifiable cause of symptoms. No herniated discs, no degenerative discs, no spinal stenosis. No anatomical causes of back pain that could be identified, yet people still experience pain. So not all people with degenerative discs have pain, and not all people with low back pain have degenerative discs. But what if you do experience pain associated with disc degeneration? Well, the worst thing you can do is stop moving. Research indicates that exercise is particularly beneficial for individuals with low back pain, especially in cases of degeneration. Exercise plays a crucial role in enhancing the strength of the muscles around the spine, building structural resilience, reducing pain, and alleviating stress. When coupled with improvements in sleep quality, a healthy diet, and positive mindset, you will be well on your way to leading a happy and fulfilling life. So remember, take imaging findings with a grain of salt. They represent just a small aspect of the overall picture and do not predict your back pain future. The key is to stay active, and if needed, seek guidance from a physical therapist for advice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Physio Show. Hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel to learn more about your body, how it works, and what it needs to keep moving.